what's going to take place. I feel a little, I'm like really be a little careful about this. Um, uh, but you know, it's and, and so it's not the level of sophistication, but the concepts are the same. Um, and so I want to get back to my day. Yeah, take it. I I know another hand came up, but why don't you go ahead and see if it ties into what we're talking about the uh, sure question. When you're searching the web to, to find these these comments and kind of gauge which way they're going, are these people that have already subscribed or clicked follow or whatever it is on or, or is your software able to like kind of catch everything? It's not it's not my software. Or uh, the software. Yeah, yeah. So they're they're um, they're capturing in the same way that, that Google or, or Yahoo or Bing or whatever, you know, it's basically crawling the entire web. They're searching the entire web. So anything that's public and that's social that's got uh, those words associated with it, they're searching for, they're, they're, they find that, they filter that content in a way that makes it relevant to the, to the specific question. So they're capturing everything. When I'm sitting there looking for information to guide, you know, to guide me and guiding a client, um, on a much smaller, uh, no less important, but much smaller effort, um, I'm just using, you know, I'm using search, I'm using, you know, Google blog search, you know, I'm looking, using Twitter search, I'm using, you know, just basic uh, tools to just get a handle on how things are trending and how things are, are moving. Um, I mean, I'm not doing it, but, but we've got a team, you know, doing, doing that work. Um, I want to get back to, to the question about proactive, speed, planning, thinking, all, all that stuff. And just, uh, we're all, this is such a clean night. <laughs> we'll just call this the event. Um, so, what's a what's a good example of this? Um, uh, well, we know in a campaign, for example, you announce your, you announce your candidacy, or um, uh, uh, or you're either going to win or lose, uh, you know, the, the nomination or whatever it might be, um, or Let's take it, you know, a little bit more complex, but just as important. What are the things that you know you're going to be attacked on? Right. So, if you're working on a race and you're, you know that the teacher association that might be against your position, just to take a random example, uh, <laughs> then you know what some of those attacks might be, right? So you can even either wait, uh, you know, until that happens and then decide how you want to respond. And most of us are smart enough to know not to do that, so we might pre-formulate and prepare, do some inoculation or whatever. But what what we're able to do now is we're able to um, uh, prepare. We can step back, and organizations are beginning to get much more sophisticated about doing this, so we can prepare for what that event is going to be. So what the attack's going to be, uh, what's an example on this CTA thing? So what's something that they that they were saying in the campaign about what's his name? I heard about this before. I know. What was about vouchers? What's that? He's for vouchers. Yeah. He's for vouchers. Okay. Well, yeah. Okay. So the attack is he the attack is he's for vouchers, uh, right? Okay. So uh, we know that that's coming. So what we do ahead of time is we preposition content. So we create maybe it's uh, you know uh, uh, testimonials for people who know his real position on it. Um, you know, that he's been a champion, you know, against this position, whatever it might be. Um, so we pre-position that content, we want it to be visual, we want it to be video, uh, etc. We figure out what, what are the words, what are the words that people are going to be searching for when they hear about this. They're going to search vouchers, they're going to search private school, they're going to search uh, religious fanatics, they're going to, you know, whatever those keywords might be, and we're going to, we're going to focus in on those and prioritize those. And then we're going to take this content, you know, our, our video, Whatever, however you want to make a video look, um, and we're going to tag it with those keywords and get that, you know, have that ready and prepared. You know, so you see where this is going. So all this stuff is being prepared so that when this event happens, all that kind of content is ready, ready to go. You push it live. Um, you might do some of the pre, some of the inoculation that Dan's talking about. In fact, I'm sure that you would do that. Um, but you really want to be prepared for this event, and you you may not want to be. You know, overly out there, defensive. On, I don't know. It depends on the issue, right? But but the but the important point here that Larry is making is, if you wait, for, whether you preact or are prepared to react quickly, the one place you don't want to be left is when the attack comes in, thinking, oh my gosh, we have to find a video or film a video. Oh my gosh, we have to find surrogates. Oh well, we have to get a script approved. You want that all ready to go at the push of the button. So the second. Criticism comes, 
you're out. Because otherwise, it's, uh, it's the normal human process of agreeing to a script, of finding the right people to uh, lend their biographical credibility, to getting the video made and posted. That's time that uh, that's time that you're never going to get back, and it's time that the opposition message is is penetrated. And then in order to make sure that your content is found, you want to be tagging that content with the words that you know people are going to be searching for. And then, this is where <coughs> the understanding of the influencers becomes important. Um, you want to make sure that you're also pushing that content out to the people and the communities, the sites, sorry about my horrible writing, um, where that content is going to make the biggest difference. Right? So, this is just an example, and then, you know, as so we come to the event, after the event unfolds, then you know this content is going to shift, the debate's going to shift, the keywords are going to shift, and so you have to be constantly monitoring and changing uh, that as well. So, as in your experience, what is the most effective online content that's cheapest? So I can see, especially early on in the campaign, you wouldn't have the resources or time or money to have the fancier prepackaged videos or maybe all the staircase yet because you're earlier unknown. So, in your experience, what are the best bang for your buck, super cheap ways to do all the things you're saying, but not necessarily have the fanciest or best produced responses or pre-acting materials. Is it videos with cats? Anti-hunter cats. Are you talking about the helicopter cat? Okay. Uh, dead. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. That's it's it, honestly it's a really it's a hard question to to answer because I mean you most campaigns need both, right? They need they need a well produced uh, short you know you need short uh, videos that are uh, that 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 have a honed message that communicate very clearly um, that you know maybe you're running on television maybe they're just running online and it's uh, just and online. Do you feel like there's a threshold between? Kind of going over the top, being silly and kitschy, trying to get views, and hopefully your message gets out that way. And then when is that threshold where you probably do these something that looks more you know, most, representative of the office? Most campaigns won't benefit from something that's that's kitschy and just getting you know just getting views. Like there's got the the, the purpose behind the video is going to be either to uh, you know in, engage you and excite and motivate and energize uh, your supporters to to some action or you know maybe to try to persuade in which case you know the on online is, has, has come up or is not a, you know that's the one place where it's very you know where it's where it, it can be helpful and we saw this you know again it was more focused on get out the vote than it was focused on persuasion but we saw a lot of that in the last you know obviously in the last presidential which is you know people uh, uh, the campaigns knowing uh, who you know, on Facebook, um, was uh, involved in the campaign in a deep, in a deep left level, and engaged those people to do, you know, to do get out the vote, and they use media very effectively, this video very effectively. To, you know, to do but, that. I, but I understand your question to be one of, of, of cost and quality, right. is that correct? Like we've talked about for five weeks now, it's all about prioritization. I mean, if you can't afford it, of course, you want every video to be shining and beautiful, but if you can only afford to make a few that way, I think one of the most important messages, either proactive or reactive, mm -hmm. that I want to make sure make an impact. My candidate's introductory biographical video. That one's got to be done well. But if I think vouchers are going to be the harshest attack that we're going to face, then let's put in some extra time and attention and make that one of higher quality too. Because as Larry's just explained, the stakes on that one are a lot higher. If not every single video you make is of that height and quality, that's not ideal. But